Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Pimp My Filter and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at another one of the filters that I would consider as a bit of a heavy hitter. Now this one isn't a heavy hitter because it pumps loads of water, it's massive, it has a huge filter and capacity. It's a heavy hitter because it is one of the most popular filters throughout the world. It's a canister filter and it's from Fluval. So you can probably guess that it is one of the O6 series. This one is the 206. Now it hasn't got the pipes in the top because they weren't sent to me. But it has got the trays and it has got the foams inside. So let's get the top off and take a look inside. Okay, we've got two clips on the top. And first of all, I just want to say that the plastic that this is made of is very good. It doesn't feel brittle, it feels nice and strong. It's a good quality plastic. So anyway, water comes in here, comes out through here, through like a one-way valve with like a, a flap on, drops into here. It then goes through a couple of foams down to the bottom before rising back up through these trays and being drawn out through here into the pump and back out to our tank. The foams are in like a cartridge so you lift that out and you've got four separate reasonably coarse foams in there and you're probably thinking that that's the first thing I'm going to change but it's actually not and I'll explain why. When the water drops in it actually can split off into two different directions. It can go down the side of here. See these fins here that keep the foams off the back? So the water can get down the back of there and come through these foams. But it can also go through these other foams and out the bottom, out here. Because we've got a similar sort of thing here. We've got these little fins that keeps the foam just a tiny little bit off the frame. So really you've, you've got all the foams being equally used, which is an absolutely great design. Water then drops right down to the bottom and it rises up through three trays in the 206. The 106 has got two trays of the same size. So we'll just put that out the way there and I shall show you the trays. Now the trays fit together pretty well and it's super important that these fit together very very well because when the water is coming through the foams it doesn't just want to go in here and come straight up through the trays, it wants to go down the bottom, up, through all the trays and back out into the pump. So the first tray has got a lid on with a perforated top that fits up against our pump and it allows water to be drawn up through here. What's in here? We've got a little bag of carbon, a fine pad. In the next one, we've got some pretty good ceramic media. That's actually not bad. I don't know whether it's the fluval one, but it's pretty porous. Obviously, it's got a lot of sealed parts because it's a ceramic, you know, it's just made of dust. But as far as the ceramic goes, it's not bad, that one. And then in the bottom tray, we've got one big block of fluval foam. Notice the dimples. Fluval are a sensible enough company to realise that when water's coming up, if it hits something with a huge surface area, it takes a long time to block. So that's bottom tray, middle tray, top tray. And if you've watched any of my previous canister filter videos, you'll realise that that is the wrong place for the fine pad. If it's in the top tray, all it does, it concentrates the fine muck into our media, clogging it prematurely, making the filter inefficient. I did say I wasn't going to do anything with this foam cartridge because I quite like the design of it and I like the way that every piece of every foam is used. But I will show you a different option for that later, once we've concentrated on the trees. So this carbon that came with it is wet. I don't know how long it's been in the filter, so it has to go out. Carbon generally only lasts roughly seven to eight weeks before it gets clogged up 
and becomes useless. If you leave it in any longer than that, all the toxic stuff that it's drawn in can actually be released again, which isn't good for the fish. The fine pad looks a little bit tired, so we'll get rid of that. Not even a handful of media in there, so we might as well get rid of that. And the coarse pad in the bottom. Although it is a good coarse pad, I'm not going to use that, but I will keep it and send it back. So this is a pretty simple setup for this filter. The bottom tray wants to be our mechanical filtration. I know we've got a lot of mechanical filtration in this cartridge, but it's all pretty coarse. So in the bottom tray, we need a minimum of a medium density pad and a fine pad to catch the medium muck and the fine muck before it gets to our media. Because of the height of the tray, I think we're going to get a coarse, medium and fine in there. So I'm going to cut all three and then we'll see what will fit. Spot on. Okay. Beautiful. People in the US keep asking me where you can get these bumpy foams. This one's the medium, the one I've just put in there is the coarse. They generally come as a pack of two or three. You get medium, coarse and fine, or you just get medium and coarse. In America, they seem to be really difficult to get a hold of, so if I can find any links, I'll put them in the video description. You may have to go to Amazon and they may have to come from China. But I'll find links and I'll put them in the video description for you guys. In the UK and in most of Europe, these are just the normal foams that are used in pond filters. They're all over the place. Every shop's got them. So getting them isn't a problem for us. Never understood why these don't seem to be available in the US. It's just one of those strange things. Now I don't expect many people watching will have a guillotine on hand. That makes it very easy for me to cut foams because I'm always fannying about with filters and so on, you know? That's why I bought the guillotine, specifically for cutting foams. If you haven't got a guillotine, just use the tray, put it down on your pad, and just cut around it. It's really simple. That's a spare that I can send down. And then that one will go in there. Fits in really well. So in our bottom tray, water is gonna hit Coarse, medium, then fine. There's our fine, there's our medium, there's our coarse. They all fit in like that. Really nice. So that's our bottom tray done. And in these top trays, we can put our choice of media. I would normally recommend Biohome Ultimate. I think you should be able to get about 500 grams in here, which is about a pound in weight if you're in the US and you're talking imperial measurements. So we'll see. Yeah, that's not far off 500 grams. If you pack it in neatly, you would get 500 grams in there. Awesome. Okay, so that's two trays in the 206, each one has got 500 grams or a pound of Biohome Ultimate. In total, for the two trays, that is one kilo or 2.2 pounds. That should be enough to give us a full cycle. That's the reduction in ammonia, nitrite, and also nitrate for a normally stocked aquarium of about 100 liters. That is half what Fluval says this will treat up to but you'd always have that up to figure anyway so that works out pretty well drop those in cartridge goes back in and we've got a well set up very efficient hard work and filter but I'll show you what you could do with the foam section if you wanted to and this is not essential. 
Now when we slot this into the canister, we do have a little bit of space on this side and a little bit less space on this side. Therefore, we could get slightly thicker, bumpy foams in. That's what I'm going to cut now. So because we've got four foams to go at, I think I'll cut two foams out of the coarse dimpled foam and I'll cut two out of the medium density dimpled foam. See what they look like. I don't know whether that's actually going to improve this particular section, but it might give us a little bit more contact surface area. We'll see what they're like when they're in. As I say, this is not essential. Now they fit in there quite beautifully. Let's just take a close look at this. There is an argument that the water won't just fly past them, it'll actually get stuck in here a little bit and slowed down and diverted a bit. Will it settle the muck out better on these foams than it would on the fluval ones? I don't know, I'm not sure. But it just shows that from ordinary pond foams you can easily cut replacement foams for your fluval filters. They fit in there really, really nicely. That's okay. But if you just want to keep the fluval foams, by all means, just keep the fluval foams. I don't think performance-wise there's going to be much difference between using these ones and those ones. But you can get replacements from ordinary sheets of foams that were designed for pond filters. That's one thing for sure, and that's going to save you a hell of a lot of money. Because the replacement ones, the official ones anyway, are expensive. And the compatible ones you can buy haven't got the dimples on. So, yeah, it might be an improvement. Just give you a look inside to show you how I've done that. Now these foams are a little bit thicker than the fluval ones, so they do pack it out a little bit more. But here we've got the medium density, and here we've got the coarse ones. It looks cool, but I don't know whether it's going to do a better job than the standard foams. I'm just feeling down underneath the trays to see what sort of height we've got underneath there, with the possibility of putting something in as a mechanical media, like the Eheim Mech, to settle out heavy muck. But I think we've only got about a quarter of an inch, so that's not really an option. Therefore, foams go back in. Top goes back on. And that's another filter, fully pimped. Right, just a few notes about what size of filter you would need for a normally stocked tank if you were expecting to see full cycle filtration. And these figures will relate to the 06 series and the 05 series. Not sure about earlier versions, but certainly the 05s and the 06s will be applicable here. So now, in all of these filters, you would sacrifice the bottom tray for foams and your fine pad. So I'm just going to say how many trays are available for media. For example, this one's got three trays. Bottom tray will be used for your foams and pad. That leaves two trays for media. So we'll start with the 106. 106 has got one available tray for media. That will hold 500 grams or one pound of Biohome Ultimate. Therefore, that filter is suitable for tanks of around 50 litres or 13 US gallons. The 206, which is this one, has two available trays for media. Each of those will hold 500 grams of Biohome Ultimate, just as you've seen here. That is a total of one kilo, so that is 2.2 pounds in total. And that makes this suitable for a normally stocked tank of 100 litres or thereabouts. That is 26 US gallons. The 306 has the same amount of trays as this, but they're slightly bigger. So the 306 has again two available trays for media. Each of those trays, however, holds one kilo of Biohome Ultimate, which is 2.2 pounds. And because you've got two kilos in total, which is 4.4 pounds, that makes the 306 suitable for tanks of around 200 litres, which is 
approximately 52 US gallons. And lastly, the 406 has four trays, three of which are available for media. Each holds a kilo, that gives you three kilos or 6.6 .6 pounds of Biohome Ultimate, making the 406 suitable for tanks of around 300 litres or 79 US gallons. I can see you now just rewinding that last bit over and over because it's got loads of figures in there. I had a hard enough job remembering it and I've got notes. So hopefully the information's in there. If I remember, I'll also replicate that information in the video description and also in the pinned comment, along with links to this canister filter. It's a very, very good filter. I would recommend it. Now, if you're in the UK and you yourself have a filter you want me to take a look at and upgrade, or you know somebody who has, by all means, get in touch. Please either ring me or send me an email. I'll put my contact details in the video description and in the pinned comment. Remember, it's a free service. All you pay for is the postage up to me. I upgrade it with new gear and send it back at my own cost because I want this series of videos to build up into some sort of database of knowledge and information about specific filters. I know they're not gonna get millions and millions of views, but that's not what it's about. It's about people putting specific search terms into Google or other search engines. Say they're searching for Fluval 206 setup, for example. Hopefully one of my videos on these filters would come up to be able to go, all oh, right, okay, so that's exactly how that filter works. And this is what I can do to improve the situation. And hopefully they can also learn the limitations of the filters so if they've got one of these on a 200 litre heavily stocked tank and it's struggling the fish aren't doing well nitrates are through the roof they know why when a filter is sized properly and set up properly there's no reason why you shouldn't get a full cycle and remember when i'm quoting these figures i'm quoting figures for a normally stocked tank if you have a heavily stocked tank you can halve those figures so for instance, the 206, I said, was suitable for a tank of around 100 litres. That's a normally stocked tank. If you had a heavily stocked tank, you could halve that again. So in essence, it, a filter that's marketed for up to 200 litres would be halved down and then halved again. So really it's suitable for a heavily stocked tank of 50 litres, which might sound like absolute overkill, but remember we're talking about full cycle filtration. And for that to occur, we do need a certain amount of biological filter media in order to support a big enough population of not only aerobic bacteria, which grows everywhere, but also the anaerobic bacteria. That's a key to the full cycle. So that's it. That's the 206. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it wherever you want. There's a hell of a lot of forums and Facebook groups out there and I would imagine there's tens of thousands of people in those groups who own a similar filter. So if you think they'd benefit from watching this video, please share it. See you next time.